Hi everyone, I'm Zi Ping from Carnegie Mellon University. Today, I would like to introduce our work on achieving 100 gigabit per second intrusion prevision on a single server, which is encrypted with an FPGA-based smart leak and a multi-core CPU. Intrusion detection and prevision system is a critical network application to protect the security of our network. This type of system is usually deployed at the gateway of our local network to identify and prevent the network threats from the internet. This is achieved by checking the network packets, including the packet payload against the large numbers of complex rules or signatures. And since almost every single byte of a network traffic will be checked against the tens of thousand rules, intrusion detection and prevention system is considered to be one of the most uh, compute intensive network applications. And due to the intensive compute requirement, there is a huge performance gap between today's language and the intrusion prevention system performance. This figure shows the network language evolution. Today, it is common to see 100 gigabit per second network in large enterprise. In contrast, the state-of-art software intrusion prevention system performance is about 1 gigabit per second per CPU core, which is already eight times faster than prior work. Nevertheless, it is still two orders of magnitude slower than today's language. To give you a concrete example, we evaluate the state-of-art open source software intrusion prevention system called SNORT, which is equipped with the latest high-performance hyperscan pattern matching library. This figure shows the number of calls needed to reach 100 gigabit per second. The x-axis shows the empirical traces we have evaluated, and the y-axis shows the number of calls needed to reach 100 gigabit per second. Note that the call number here are extrapolated from the single call zero loss throughput we measure. And this extrapolation assumes ideal staging. As we can see that some of the uh, will require hundreds of calls, but the other traces will require much more number of calls. Overall, this approach will require 4 to 21 servers and 1 to 6 kilowatts. Dedicated 4 to 21 servers just for this intrusion prevention purpose is not a cost and a power efficient solution. In this work, we propose Pixus, which is a 100 gigabit per second intrusion prevention system that is implemented on a single server. Our end-to-end -end system consists of an FPGA-based smart NIC, which can process a network traffic in line, and a 16-core CPU. Now let's take a look at the comparison between Pixels and Snort. Here, we also evaluate our end-to-end -end system using the same set of rules and traces as uh, Snort. The orange bar represents the number of calls needed to reach 100 gigabit per second for Pixels. It's important to point out that Pixels numbers are real call count. They are not extrapolated numbers as shown for Snort. As we can see, Pixels uses 100x less calls than Snort consistently across all the empirical traces. And in the worst case, we only need 14 calls. So our end-to-end -end system only use one 16-core on CPU plus an FPGA-based smart name. And the overall power consumption is two orders of magnitude less than Snort solution. So what's the secret sauce behind this 100x improvement? As I said earlier, we use FPGA in our system. However, simply following a traditional FPGA acceleration scheme would not give us this 100x improvement. In this work, we propose FPGA first architecture, which is a fundamentally different FPGA acceleration scheme to make the 100x improvement possible. Before I introduce 
FPGA perfect architecture. Let's take a look at the traditional FPGA as offload acceleration scheme. And in this scheme, packets come from, uh, comes into CPU first, and then CPU parses the packet and re reassembles the packet into contiguous by, by stream. Then CPU uploads a particular task to FPGA, for example, the multi-stream pattern matching in this case, where the packet is partially checked against the tens of thousand rules. If a packet does not partially match any rule, then this packet is an innocent packet and will be forward out. If a packet partially matches any rule, then this packet is a suspicious packet and will be further checked by a module called full matcher on CPU. In this scheme, CPU is still the main processing unit and the FPGA is the offloader. However, this approach will not give us 100x speed up. The main reason is that there is no single dominating task anymore. Especially, Hyperscan has made the multi-stream pattern matching task eight times faster than prior work. This figure shows the performance breakdown of Snort plus Hyperscan. The x-axis is, again, the different empirical choices. The y-axis is a fraction of CPU time each task takes. As we can see, there is no single dominating task. And based on AMDA's law, accelerating a particular task can at most give us about 2x N2N speed up, assuming this task takes zero time to execute on FPGA, and there is no communication overhead between FPGA and CPU. Clearly, we will not get 100x speed up using this scheme. So the key design decision we made in Pixels is to invert the traditional offload scheme. We call this new scheme FPGA first architecture, where the FPGA is a main processing unit and the CPU works as an offloader of the FPGA. This figure shows the FPGA first architecture used in Pixels. The majority of the tasks are mapped to FPGA, and only part of a full matcher is mapped to CPU. The packets comes into FPGA first and may or may not reach CPU. Indeed, we have observed that among all the empirical traces we have evaluated, on average, about 95% of the traffic can be processed entirely on FPGA, and only 5% of traffic will be considered as suspicious packet and thus require full match on CPU file. By processing the com uh, common case entirely on FPGA, we significantly reduce the workload for uh, CPU and th thus reduce the number of calls needed to reach 100 gigabit per second. However, it is very challenging to realize this FPGA first architecture because of the uh, limited fast memory on FPGA. Even though we are using a pretty high-end FPGA, the amount of fast uh, on-chip memory, which is called block RAM or BRAM, is very limited, only about 16 megabytes. But we would like to map almost everything on one FPGA. This will not fit if we directly using existing FPGA modules. For example, if we just are using existing FPGA-based flow reassembly and FPGA-based multi-stream pattern uh, matching module, they will require more than 87 uh, megabytes of VRAM, far beyond our 16 megabytes capacity. So the challenge here is how to fit almost everything on one FPGA. So just to recap, the first secret sauce of Pixels is to use FPGA first architecture, which makes 100x improvement possible. However, it also introduces the memory challenge of fitting almost everything on one FPGA. And to tackle this problem, we proposed a couple of ideas. But in this talk, I will just focus on one of the algorithms to address the memory challenge, which is hierarchical multi-stream pattern matching. 
Please refer to our paper for other ideas like flow reassembly and uh, memory resource management. So the goal of multi-stream pattern matching is to check the packet's payload and port number against the tensor solvents rules in one pass. Here I'm showing you an example rule. In SNORT, the multi-stream pattern matching is responsible for checking the header field uh, of a rule and um, the faster pattern field of a rule. The rest of the fields, including the other stream pattern or regular expressions, are checked by the full matcher. It's important to point out that if any field is a mismatch, then this rule will not be a match. For example, if a faster pattern is not a match, then it is safe to ignore the entire rule. Pixel's multi-stream pattern matching is different. We check the header, faster pattern, and as well as uh, the other stream patterns, which we call non-faster pa non stream pattern. This part is checked in, this part was checked in SNORT full matcher initially, but we found that it is dominating the full matcher uh, runtime. So we decided to map this uh, matching logic on FPGA to further reduce the uh, load of CPU. Now let's look at what are the design options to map multi-stream pattern matching on FPGA. The state of our FPGA-based multi-stream pattern matching uses state machine-based approach, which will require 23 megabytes of VRAM if we want to map all of the tensor solvent rules. The SNOT hyperscan software algorithms use a hash table based approach. However, di directly mapping that algorithm to FPGA will take 25 megabytes of VRAM. So now these algorithms meet our requirement as we only have 16 megabytes of VRAM in total. And uh, that is shared by all of the components on FPGA, not just the multi stream pattern matching. Pixel's multi stream pattern matching is in inspired by a uh, hyperscan algorithm. We also took the hash table based approach. However, we are able to complete more work, but only using three megabytes of VRAM. In this talk, I will not show the details of how we implement and organize the hash tables. Instead, I will explain the high level ideas of uh, multi stream, multi, multi, uh, multi stream pattern matching design. Pixels utilize the performance and memory trade off in IPGA design. To support high performance on IPGA, usually we need to leverage the data parallelism where we can process more data in parallel. This requires creating multiple replicas of the matching data structure, such that, the mod, uh, such that different data can be checked simultaneously to increase the overall throughput. However, this will lead to more memory consumption at the same time, because we have made um, more replicas. That, and that, that is part of a reason that um, the multi-stream pattern matching is very memory consuming. Our key observation is that in practice, there's no need to keep up with 100 gigabit per second everywhere. As I will show later, some of the subcomponents can work at lower speed. And uh, because of that, we can use less memory with lower performance is a lot. So our key idea in, our, uh, in multi stream pattern matching design is to use hierarchical filters with reduced replicas at each layer. Now let me show you how it looks like. Pixel's multi stream pattern matching has three stages. The first stage is responsible to handle 100 gigabit per second of data. And thus, we do need to create enough numbers of replicas to keep up with the speed. But after the first stage, the majority of the bytes in the traffic will not generate any potential matches. As a consequence, the following stages do not need to run at 100 gigabit per second on average. 
for example, the second stage is a header match, uh, header match, header matching stage, which only needs to keep up with about 23 gigabit, uh, gigabit per second. And the last stage, non-faster, non-faster stream pattern, uh, matching stage only needs to keep up with 11 gigabit per second based on our profile of uh, empirical tracing. Thus, we can reduce the amount of uh, replicas of uh, expensive features, for example, the non-faster pattern uh, stage only, only needs 16 replicas. So in the end, we only need to push about 5 gigabit, uh, 5 gigabit per second of traffic to CPU to significantly reduce um, the amount of work that should be handled by CPU fine. So now let's take a look at the evaluation results of our engine system. I have shown this figure in the beginning of my talk. Here we test both small and pixels using the same set of rules and traces. The x axis represents the uh, different empirical traces we have evaluated. The y axis shows the number of calls needed to reach 100 gigabit per second. So the lower, the better. The blue bar represents the uh, snort call numbers, which is uh, extrapolated from the single call performance we measured. The orange bar represents Pixels call numbers, which is the uh, actual call count when uh, Pixels handles 100 GB per second in traffic without any loss. Again, we can see Pixels uses only a handful of calls, which is two orders of magnitude less than snort. So what's the benefits we can get by saving hundreds of calls? The answer is lower power and a lower cost. Here I'm showing you the power consumption of Snort and Pixels. This time, the y-axis is power instead of calls. As we can see, Pixels uses two orders of magnitude less power than Snort. We also estimate the total cost of ownership of both Snort and Pixels. The total cost of ownership is calculated as the uh, sum of uh, capital, co uh, capital cost, which is the hardware cost itself, uh, including the CPU cost and FPG bots, plus the energy cost, assuming three years of lap time. Snod, snod total cost of ownership is about $36,000, where Pixel's total cost of ownership is less than one third of that. And this saving of pixels comes from both the capital cost and uh, uh, as well as the energy cost. To conclude, pixels is able to support 100 gigabit per second on a single server, saving hundreds of calls and thus only consumes one third of the snort approach cost. The key device decision made in Pixels is the FPGA-first architecture, which makes the 100x improvement possible. However, at the same time, this also introduces the memory challenge. And to address the memory challenge, Pixels proposed a couple of ideas to efficiently use memory. And in this talk, I only explain how hierarchical features makes the multi-screen pattern matching more memory efficient. And please refer to our paper for the other ideas. Pixels is open source now, and welcome to try it out. Thank you.